Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to find the areas underneath the normal distribution using Excel. So that is instead of using our table, we can use this method here in order to quickly calculate what the corresponding probabilities would be and work through our problems as such. We'll also look at it through the opposite way, such as I have a probability and I wanna work out, hey, what is my corresponding Z value? So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at a question to start off. So, okay, let's suppose we have a distribution. And so here we have X being normally distributed. And we'll say that X is centered around 500 with a standard deviation of X of 50. Let's suppose that we are wanting to know, okay, hey, what is the what is the probability that we pick out some value of x that is greater than, let's say greater than ah, 580. So, okay, if that's our 500, drop down 580, somewhere like so. There we go, there's our 580, and we're looking, hey, what's the probability that x is greater than 580? So we're looking for this red shaded area in this scenario. Well, okay, first thing we have to do, right? Just like before, we have to convert this to a Z. So, okay, here we go. There's a Z. We wanna find out what's 580 as a Z. Well, always the way we standardize, random variable of interest minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So our Z will be 580 minus 500 all over 50. So that's 80 over 50. That yields 1.60. So there we go, 1.60. And what we would typically go and do is we would go and we take 1.60, we would go to our table and we would go and look up what is the area between 1.60 and our mean? That is, if we were to go and do that, if we were to go do that, we'd go down the left-hand side to 1.6 over to zero, and we would get 0 0.4, ah, uh, where did it go here? 1.60, 0 0.4452. From here, we would then say we're interested in this way, right, all the way out to infinity, and we would go 0.5 minus. So 0.5 minus 0.4452, we would get 0 0.0548. Okay, but what if we didn't want to play around with looking at the table? What if we wanted to look at this a different way? And that is we could use Excel instead of a table to look up what is the probability attached with a Z value of 1.60. And let's take a look at how we do that. Let's jump over to Excel and let's see that, uh, that process there. Keep in mind by jumping over to Excel, it's gonna get bright. We're going from a black screen to a white screen. So just be prepared for that. Okay, so here we have Excel. And let's just start by writing down our Z value. So Z equals, we're interested in a Z value of 1.60. What we're looking for is we are looking for the probability that Z is greater than 1.60. Okay, so what we wanna do in order to get this is we wanna turn the Z into a probability. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use, what we're gonna use is this norm.s.dist function. You can hit tab to have it pop up. And all that we need for this is the Z value and whether or not we're looking for the cumulative or not. So for the Z, we'd put in either this value here or we could type in 1.60. Then for cumulative, we are going to go for true. We want the cumulative distribution. And this works out for us all together 0.9452. Okay, 0.9452, wow, well that's, that's a pretty big probability. Let's, let's go back and compare this to what we were looking at there. And so 
that's a big probability, right? Keep in mind this whole curve is 100%. This is almost the entirety of the curve. So what's happening? What is Excel working out as it's doing this? Well, okay, for our table itself, for the table, the table is always giving us the value between our Z and the mean, right? So 4, 4, 5, 2. What Excel is doing, Excel is always going to say, hey, here's your Z value of 1.60. We will calculate the cumulative, the entire area underneath the curve up to your value. So that is, we just calculated that entire blue area, everything less than 1.60 as our area of 0.9452. Okay, in this case, that's not what we're looking for, right? We're not looking for this blue area. We're looking for that red area there. So in order to get this, what we need to do is we need to go one minus 0 0.9452, and that would give us 0 0.0548, right? Same result there in the end, same thing, no matter which way we look at it, that's a good sign. Distinction here, right? Big distinction in how we did this. In this case here, we did 0.5 minus 0.4452 because we were only looking at the half of the distribution. When we used Excel, because it's doing it for the whole distribution, we need to do one minus. So a little bit of a different process there. So big thing to keep in mind. If you're using the table, to find something in the tail, we're doing 0.5 minus. If we're using Excel, you're using one minus. With Excel, right, if we want to further complicate things, we'll notice that, hey, because it's going that Z value smaller, we're actually going to get different values if I looked up, say, a Z of 1.60 versus a Z of negative 1.60. Right, so negative 1.60, that would have been attached to an X value of 420. So if I was interested in, hey, what was the probability of witnessing 420 or more? Let's just do that in green, 420 or more. So I want all of this this time, the entire green area. Well, okay, if I were to go use my table, I would go, I'd look up 1.60, there's no negative, so I'd put that in and it would t say, hey, this here is 0 0.4452, right? And then I'd say, okay, 0 0.4452 here, 50% on the other side, and I'd work out my result. Not so in this case, right? In this case, if I go back to Excel and take a look at that, so let's just jump back to Excel, we'll get bright again. This time I want a Z value of negative 1.6. So if I have a Z value, right, we'll update this instead of 1.6, we'll go negative 1.6. In this case here, my Z value falls to be 0 0.054799. So 0 0.0548, 0 0.0548, right? And why, why is it this case in this, yeah, this number in this case? Because again, what Excel is calculating is the area below the Z value of interest. So it's just looking up this blue area here, that left tail. So if you want to use Excel in order to calculate these probabilities, you can, you can work it out. But you got to keep in mind that the way that the table reports these probabilities is very different from how Excel and many stats programs report these probabilities. Tables are always, well, I shouldn't say always, most tables are between the Z value and the mean. Most statistical softwares are cumulative probabilities saying, hey, probability of witnessing your Z value all the way to negative infinity, right? So your Z value that way. So a bit of a distinction, a bit of a difference in how it calculates you need to be aware as to, okay, what is my probability that's being reported and what is it? What is it telling me, right? Final one, what if we have a different kind of case? Let's, uh, let's use the same scenario here. Let's say that we have, again, mean of 500, standard deviation of x of, I think I said 50. And in this case, let's say we want to know, hey, 
what value of x would you need in order to be in the top decile, right? That is to be in the top 10%. Well, okay, what we have to keep in mind is that if there's 10% here, well, then everything else in this distribution is altogether 90%. The way we would typically solve this using a table is we would go and convert to a Z. So let's use green for our Z this time. There's Z, there's X. Okay, and I would want to find the Z value such that here's some value of Z such that the area between my mean and this Z value was 0.4000, right? Or closest there too. Guys, right, keep in mind, we just ignore this 50%, focus in and say, hey, that bit there would be 40% if that guy there is 10. So if we went and did that, we could go to our stats table, we could go into the middle, we could try to find the closest one to 40%. Closest one to 40% is something like 1.28. So 1.28. And then from 1.28, we would work backwards to find our x value, right? So, okay, z is x minus mu all over sigma. Well, we know z is 1.28. That's going to be x minus a mu of 500 all over sigma of 50. Okay, solve for our unknown there. We would finish up with x equals... 564. So 564 would be the value of x such that that would be our cutoff to get into that upper decile. Okay, that's how we would typically do it. How would we work this out with Excel, right? So in this case here, what we're looking for is we're looking for a probability of 0 0.4000. Keep in mind that with the table, we had to kind of fudge this a little bit. We didn't find 0 0.4000 exactly. We found the next closest, which was 0 0.3997. All right, and we said, okay, one way we can kind of correct for this is we could make this 1.285 to say, hey, it's in between this guy and the next guy. And that gives us, you know, a bit of a closer answer as well. So another way we could have done that. But let's jump over to Excel. Let's see what Excel calculates for us. And in this case here, it'll be a much more, a much more precise result. So let's jump back there. In this case, what we are looking for is we are looking for a probability of 0 0.40. But one thing to keep in mind is that the way Excel is going to be dealing with these probabilities, they're not just looking at that 0.4, that is between our Z value and the mean, they're looking at that cumulative, so from that z value all the way to negative infinity, right? So that one all the way to negative infinity, well, okay, that's going to be this 0.4 as well as this 0.5, giving us 0.9 all together. So, okay, 0.9 all together, let's update that. This guy here would actually be 0 0.90. We can then find our z value. We're going to use a norm dot s and in this case instead of norm dot s dot dist or distribution we're going to go down and we're going to use the inverse norm dot s dot inverse so if we hit tab to get that guy to pop up what it's saying is hey what is the probability that you're interested in and we're saying we're interested in that probability there we put that value in and we get our z value popping out and there we go, 1.281552, right? This here is calculating the exact Z value to however many decimal places we need. Well, typically, right, typically just to keep convention, we're going to keep it to two decimal places. So there's our Z value of 1.28. 1.28, and in that case there, that was 1.28 as this whole area, like we just said, everything less than it was 90%. So we see we get the same result both ways of looking at this. Okay, so we've seen how we can use Excel in order to find the areas underneath the curve or go from probability to a Z statistic using Excel. What we can also do is we can do the same thing but for a T statistic. 
Now, we've seen with our t-tables that uh, we're really limited in working around with our probabilities given the t-table. And that's because we have a unique t-distribution for every possible degrees of freedom. So having this ability to look it up in Excel allows us to work with the t just as easily as we could work with the standard normal because, well, we can just look it up using Excel and it makes it a lot much easier for us than trying to play around with that table. Big thing to keep in mind is that if we're looking it up with the t distribution, well, looking it up with the t distribution, we really need to know, okay, A, what's our degrees of freedom? And then we need to keep in mind that the probability, the area which is being pulled up is the same kind of probability as what we're pulling up here with our normal. That is, it will always be some value, right? In this case here, what did we have? We always had some value of z or smaller. Right, it was always that cumulative or some value of z or smaller. Always had that kind of situation occurring. Same thing for the t. We're always reporting the cumulative probability up to and including that statistic that we're interested in. So let's take a look at an example of this. Let's just carry forward this guy actually. So let's just recreate it here. We had a distribution. What did we say we were centered around? We said we were centered around 500 and we had a standard deviation of, what do we have a standard deviation of? 50. Uh, let's say this is the standard deviation of X bar. So, and hey, we're using our T. So truthfully, what is this guy here? This guy here truthfully is gonna be our sample standard deviation, right? Our sample standard errors. So that would be, 50 and then let's go all over root. Let's say we're pulling out a sample size of 25. So okay, here's x bar. There's my standard errors. Let's work that through. 50 over root 25. That's going to give me standard errors of 10. Okay, well let's say that I want to then work out based off of this. Okay, s of x sample standard deviation. So okay, I'm going to be moving to a T distribution. T distribution is going to depend on the degrees of freedom, right? This is Tn minus one. So in this case, 25 in my sample size, I'd be working with a T24. Okay, well, let's suppose that I witness some value of, let's say I witness some value of, there we go, let's say this guy here is 515. And I want to figure out, hey, what's the probability of witnessing this probability of X bar or more extreme all the way out over there in the tail? So how could I figure this out? Well, first thing I have to do, right, is I have to convert this 515 to my T. So to do that, okay, 515 to a T, T n minus 1 is going to be X bar minus mu all over my standard errors. In that case there, 515 minus 500 all over 10. And I get 15 over 10. That gives me 1.50. Okay, 1.50. Problem is, if we went to our table, this would be a real nightmare to try to figure out, right? We wouldn't be able to figure out our probabilities. We'd just be stuck. We'd be done at this point here. We'd be like, okay, I can't do anything. But by utilizing Excel, what we can do is we can jump over there and we can take a look at what it is. So that could be Excel, it could be R, depending on the one that we want to look at. We would jump over to our software package and we can calculate. So let's take a look at Excel and see how we would do that there. So, okay, here we go. We have our Excel. In this case here, we had a T. And that was, I'm going to say, a T24 of 1.50. I want to know what the probability is that's attached to that. So to do that, I can go equals T distribution. And this is the left tail of that T distribution. And I can put in my value of X. That's the T value that I figured out there. So that's that guy, 1.50. And I need to input my degrees of freedom, 24. Cumulative, yes, I want a cumulative distribution. That is everything up to that point there. Hit equal, and I get my probability. 
0 0.926672. So let's go 0 0.9267. Let's jump back and let's take a look at what that works out to, 0 0.9267. So that was 0 0.9267. Again, keeping in mind how this is working out these probabilities, what is it working out in this case? Well, that's working out the probability of 1.50 all the way all the way to negative infinity right so what it's just worked out for us what it's just worked out for us is let's just update these colors so that they match it's just worked out that which would be all of this underneath my curve keep in mind that's not what i'm looking for right i'm not looking for this blue area i'm looking for the yellow area and so the way that I could get this yellow area is I could go, okay, 0.9267 is the whole thing. So the whole distribution sums to 1. So 1 minus 0.9267 would give me 0 0.0733. Great, right? Now I can use Excel in order to get the probabilities and be able to work out for this T distribution without using tables. Right, this works the other way, right? Say I wanted to do something silly. We've seen already, hey, I got some value here, x bar of 515. Let's say I wanted to do something like a 70% confidence interval around that. And right, 70% confidence interval is going to be like, well, okay, we could kind of visualize what we're doing here. 70% confidence interval. We have our distribution. There we go. T centered around zero. Essentially, what we're saying is some value, some value, such that in here, all of this red bit is 70%. Well, if that's 70%, I'm going to have in my tails the remainder, which is 30%, which would be 0 0.15, 0 0.15. Okay. If we were going to try to look this up on our table, right? We don't have a 0.15 on our table for our degrees of freedom. Or sorry, for our degrees of freedom, for our possible values of alpha. So in that case there, because we don't have that, we can't use the table, we'd be done, we'd be stuck, we couldn't do anything. But no, 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 we're good. We can, we can work this out. In this case, what we're looking for is we're trying to find the values of t here based off of that. And keep in mind, t is again a symmetric distribution. And the way that our stats programs work is they're always finding out, hey, okay, you want this value? We'll report the probability under the curve of this value to the left. Or this value here, we'll figure out this one here all the way to the left. So let's see how we could work that out. Let's go jump over. So to start off, let's calculate this guy here. That is the probability of the area to the left is this 15%. So let's go take a look. So in this case, I want a probability that t is less than t of 0 0.15. And to get that value there, that would give me a t24. So in this case, here I want to go t dot, and I want to go down to this guy here, that's t dot inv, the inverse of my t. So I could go down to it, hit tab to get it to pop up. It says, okay, what's your probability? Well, my probability was 15%. That was that whole area to the left. Comma, how many degrees of freedom do I need? Well, I have 24 degrees of freedom. Hit enter, and I get my T statistic. Negative 1.05932. Okay, I have two of them though. Hopefully, right, you're like, okay, but it's symmetric. We have 15% in each tail, so the other T is just going to be 1.052. But we could, we could verify this if we wanted to, right? The other probability, the other probability that, hey, we have from that T all the way left, well, that's going to be 1 minus 0.15. That is, we're going to have a 0.85 left of that. Let's just jump back again and see, be able to visualize what I'm talking about. We're looking for that right hand side there. We're looking here such that this all the way left is 0 0.85, right? That's this guy here. 
85 right there. So, okay, that's that case. Let's work out what that corresponding value would be. 0 0.85, let's work that T24 out. We again want our T inverse. We're looking at that probability, and again, 24 degrees of freedom. There we go, good sign. We get the same, we get our same statistic here. We get 1.059, 1 1.09, 1.059, 1.059. There we go, same on both sides. You see that as we get into the farther out decimal places, a little bit different, um, that there's just how that guy's working out. But two or two decimal places, which is really what we're interested in reporting our T statistic to, we are identical even to three decimal places, four decimal places, right? It's not until we get a bit farther out that we start to get wonky. So let's go and report that. We'll report it to 1.059. 1.059, that'd be negative, 1.059. So that is our T for a 70% confidence interval for 24 degrees of freedom would be plus or minus 1.059. Okay, working that out now, we can do that. Our T, our confidence interval, X bar, plus or minus T 70%, uh, 24 degrees of freedom, sample standard deviation all over root N. Hey, we have everything we need. We have 515 for that guy. Plus or minus 1.059. And then my standard errors, what did we say those worked out to? Let's scroll up and take a look. Uh, those were 50 over root 25 or 10. So in that case there, I get my point estimate, plus or minus 1.059 times 10. So my fuzz is going to be 1059. So point estimate, that guy there. That's my fuzz yielding for me 52.559 and on the lower side 504.41. So there we go. Great. We can work out our confidence interval. We can get these T values by looking them up in Excel, especially in cases where we don't have where we don't have this value, right? where we can't find that value of alpha on our stats tables. So being able to use Excel or another stats software as such is extremely useful to be able to calculate these guys. If you have any questions, if you have any parts that was really hard or you're not really sure what you're doing, how you're getting your result that's different from mine, feel free to reach out to me. Again, post it to the D12 Frequently Asked Questions or send me an email. Thanks.